I'm Teresa Carney. I work at the Tsong National Museum of Natural History and I curate the small mammal collection. This Unsung Heroes exhibition is overdue. It is important to this museum because the museum houses incredibly large collections of biodiversity that represent the Southern African and there is much that the public don't see. And those collections are built up by many people. And often the people who recognize for those collections are the researchers, who've done research on them, published on them, been in the public eye because of that work. But behind them, and really critical to the collection, are what we're commemorating here, the people who we call the unsung heroes. The people, the staff who over the years have collected the specimens, also prepare the specimens and without their work, without their preparation, we wouldn't have these collections. So as I say, it's it's time we brought them to the public's eye. So it's not all staff that have been at this museum, but it's a snapshot for some of the collections. As I said, this museum has large collections across a wide range of biodiversity, um, but it goes from the fossils to the extent who are still living. So we have two fossil collections represented here, one from the Karoo region and the other the Pliopithecine collection. Most people would know about the Cradle of Mankind in the Portland area west of Pretoria and north of Joburg that's revealed many um, fossils, including the hominins. But then we also have large collections of both um, animals without backbones and vertebrates and animals with backbones and vertebrates. And we have represented here the beetles, or coleoptera, and mammals and birds. This is in a temporary display area and what we're trying to produce in this area in relation to the permanent exhibitions is something to draw people into the museum and to indicate something about what's happening at the back, so in the collection areas. There is a narrative in this exhibition and it's for some people it's a bit difficult because you have to work anti-clockwise. So the first panels are setting scenes of why we have this exhibition. The fact that this museum is seated in the history of this country too. So pre-democracy in 1994, this museum had no black directors or curators. The black staff were at a lower level of a collection team and we wish to now show that there's been transformation and change and also reflect not only the excellent work that people did at a preparation level but the fact in some ways sadness that those people, many of whom could have been curated, may have been directed. But the museum is in the corner and it's not the same country. We now have a black director and several black directors. So the stories um, that we tell is it's by section, so by collection, and then we highlight people who have contributed to the preparation work as well as the collection work and in some instances give a little bit of information about that individual and where we have, we had a, we have a photograph of that person and then just to give the public an idea of the, what preparation work entails because it's different from one collection to another. It's very different from fossils to birds or mammals. We have a panel that indicates what the preparation work entails. So what we're hoping people will go away with is a multifaceted array of information. So it's information about the people who worked here, who contributed to the collection, what the collection entails, what preparation entails, and maybe for some young people, what job opportunities exist. Because, again, largely hidden from the 
But a, a really important part of a natural history museum is the preparation of the specimen. I hope that people will appreciate what the museum is attempting to achieve in documenting the biodiversity, particularly for the subregion, a very rich um, region in terms of biodiversity and not only currently living but also fossil. And then even more so what it takes to conserve that and the people who've been part of that. And then as I mentioned before, some of the history of this country in terms of black people having been excluded pre-democracy from certain roles in this institution. But now that has changed. There are two, one an older story and one a more recent story. And the older one is a gentleman called Saul Satori. Mainly it's because the collections were smaller at that point in time, but he appears in three panels, three sections, so from Biodiversity, Paleontology and Mammals and Birds. Mammals and Birds at that stage were working together under Austin Roberts, but he just seems to have been an amazing guy and, and incredibly talented at what he did and he was obviously in much demand. So he's somebody who I think the museum could do a lot more in terms of bringing to the fore just what he contributed to. In these days we really specialised in our posts, but he worked both fossils and extensions. And we have some lovely pictures of him. Um, there's one where he's sitting on the steps outside after a large field trip with Austin Roberts and Vivian Fitzsimmons and they all look so proud of the specimens they've collected and it's, I think for its era there's a lovely level of, there's no difference in that image between curator and curator. And then the other one, I'm going to be biased because it's somebody that I had the privilege of working with before he retired and that was Sam Rundlakwa and he he was one of those really talented preparators who every day was going to do the best preparation, produce the best specimen. And and that attitude that he brought to the work meant every day he produced incredible legacy of collection.